Hello, hello, hello. You are tuning into another episode of The Wonderkin Show. Today's topic Has the water run dry? Ah, yo, shout out to boys to men because let's be real, that, that anthem they did was absolutely fire. And you already know Water Runs Dry is one of their hits. But let me get to where I'm going with this. What I mean by water run dry in a well, or I can probably word it better, has the bridge been absolutely burnt beyond repair between Lamar and the Ravens? Yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I was going over some stuff that's been going out, because you already know there's been a lot of he, he said, she said, she said, coming out from the media, oh, he's not practicing, oh, he's not showing up, oh, he is slacking, oh, the team is mad at him, oh, you know what I'm saying? So, I, a question really popped up to me, and I said, has the well run dry, or is the bridge burnt or damaged beyond repair? And reparable damage, has it been done? And honestly, honestly, I think no. Let me get, let me, let me, let me make sure I put my foot in this properly. So, <clears throat> one thing that we're certain of is that when Lamar Jackson speaks, he speaks very candid. That's why I think he's so careful at what he says and does because he doesn't like to lie. And <clears throat> he's always said that. He said, look, if I say it, it's 100%. That's what it is. I'm not hiding anything or anything like that. I'm being 100% with you guys. And that's why I felt like he blocked so much of the contract talks is because he didn't want to go in depth in it because he knows that, look, I've already made the persona that I'm an open book and I don't want to give them those pages out of that book yet. So let's just not talk about it. We can You can ask questions about other things. And he's been an open book. And when people ask questions and when he does answer them, he's been absolutely I mean, open and to a fault sometimes, but there's neither here nor there. I was going over some of the stuff that were being said, and I was thinking, you know, can we actually resign Roquan and Lamar? And I was thinking, you know, do we have enough money? Are the Ravens still going to be cheap? Are they going to try to trade Lamar? And here's the thing. Here's the reason why I don't think the Ravens would try to trade Lamar, especially even right now. Because I think it would be it would become an ESPN 30 for 30. <laughs> Straight up. It would become an ESPN 30. The fumble heard around the world by the Ravens. ESPN 30 for 30. <laughs> I'm serious, bro. Listen, I know some people's like, nah, I don't know. I'm telling you. Because I've I've, I've let people know where I stand on the Lamar Jackson standpoint. He's not, he's the greatest, and I want, I want to put this in perspective. He's the greatest combination of throwing and running that this league has ever seen. A lot of people go back to Michael Vick, like, Michael Vick, Michael Vick, Michael Vick, Michael Vick could not throw the ball. He had the arm strength. Michael Vick had a literal, he was Mega Man. He had a cannon on his arm. He went, hoo, 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 hoo. boom. You know what I mean? But when I'm talking about accuracy, short, mid, middle of the field, not just deep balls. Pause. Lamar Jackson's a better thrower. And then you look at his shiftiness, his speed, the ability to never get that big hit. Yeah, man. The greatest combination of runner and thrower this league has ever seen. And I think that the Ravens know that. And I think that they know that it would be the dumbest mistake that they would ever make to try to get rid of it. I think they know that. And I don't think that they would go there. I think it would set, because you have to understand, the Ravens are all about precedence. Just like they don't want to set the precedent of giving a player, another player, a fully guaranteed deal. They don't want to set a precedent of giving up generational QBs. <laughs> Especially when it took them so long to finally get one. How long has the Ravens been an organization that was it, oh, 29 years now or something like that? Think about it. It's been like 28, 29 years the Ravens have been in Baltimore or something of that effect. We've had one true franchise QB. We've had QBs that have won championships. We've had QBs that have done decent, but we've never had no MVP and no, no top three QB. Pfft. Never. 
So I think that they would never set the precedent of saying, yo, we're getting rid of a player of that caliber because it's been shown already what he could do with less. That's fact. Can't even argue it. They know it. And this is another reason why I feel like it's not it's not beyond repair. And look, if you're, a lot of people could say, well, it's one-sided or whatever. Listen, Lamar Jackson holds the cards in this and in, in his all the cards in his hand. And I told this to somebody, I said, <clears throat> even though he holds the cards, I truly do believe I think he wants to be here. I think the only other place that he would look at thoroughly and be like, I'd be there is Miami. Personally, that's what I truly, truly think. That's the only other team that I truly feel that because it all works out. Think about it. He would go back home, right? He get to play for his 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 childhood team, and there's no state taxes. <laughs> so he gets to keep more of his money. <laughs> and remember, he's all about his money. So that's the only team I could truly feel, maybe Tampa, right, because it's close to home, that he would say I would leave Baltimore for him. But I don't think that the Baltimore Ravens are done give, trying to give him what he needs. And I think that at the end of the day, I think Lamar wants to win a championship here. For as good or as fault as that might come to some people that adore Lamar, I think that's the I think that's the bottom line for him. I think he wants to bring a championship here. I truly do. Because that's what he said. And Lamar, as much as anybody has said anything, he's always been what? Truthful. Honest or whatever he said. So do I think we can retain him? Yes. Do I hope we retain him? Yes. Is it a possibility that we don't? Yes. But I think it's a very low possibility that we don't. And look, I'll be real with you. Y'all got to understand where I'm coming from. I'm very candid about what stuff that I say. Let me let y'all understand how this works. If Lamar Jackson leaves, John Harbaugh and EDC, they're on the hot seat. And as a fact, you might look for Bashadi to maybe try to sell the team. If they lose Lamar, Bashadi's selling the team. That's a guarantee. I'm telling you, they're selling the team. He would sell the team if, if they could not resign Lamar. And they said, we got to go back to the dark ages of when this place barely had anybody in it. We were barely sending any merchandise. The, the people that bought the one Ray Lewis jersey from 20 years ago still got the same Ray Lewis jersey. They ain't trying to upgrade it, nothing. He would sell the team. And that would mean bye-bye to Harbaugh and bye-bye to EDC. So that makes their, their seats hot like fire. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying to people. Like, that's what you got to get through your minds. That's what you got to get through your heads. That's why I said they don't want to lose him. Harbaugh already knows what uh, Lamar is. He knows. His job's been saved twice by him. <laughs> ah, Twice. Think about that. So he's already like, bro, we already know what Lamar is. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I I truly believe that as bad as EDC has been at picking in the draft, and I think he's been absolutely horrendous in the draft, um, I truly do believe that if it was up to him, Lamar Jackson would already be signed. I truly do. I think this is a Bashadi thing, a billionaire not wanting to fold, not wanting to feel like, they got taken to the cleaners or that they got one upped, especially with the optics of it. Because y'all got to understand this. I don't care what anybody says. It doesn't have to be looked at as, oh, that's racist or whatever else like that. We're talking about an older white man looking at a younger black man saying, yo, he just took me to the cleaners. It's the optics of it. And pride and ego is two things, two things that every billionaire has. <laughs> That's a guarantee, bro. Pride and ego is something because guess what? They have enough money to ignore your, your egos. Like for us, we can't be that way because why? We have to go to work tomorrow. We can't be that way to our coworkers. We'll get fired. We can't be that way to our bosses. We'll get fired. We can't be that way to people or, or customers or whatever. It's like that. We'll get fired. And all walks of life, billionaires do not live by the same rules as us. Because they're so high up on the totem pole that it's almost like they live in a bubble. So when it comes to pride and ego, they're not giving that up. Because that's part of the reason why they were able to reach the heights in which they've reached. So that's, I, listen, I'm telling y'all, that's the problem. But Shadi's already told you what's up. He's like, bro, I don't think that, uh, to take that leap. But look, I don't think Lamar, listen, I think he would take it if it was given. But I don't think that a fully guaranteed um, contract 
I don't think that's truly what he's looking for because he straight up said, look, they didn't even offer me what Russell Wilson got, <laughs> which is comical to say the least. I think if the Ravens were serious and said, look, we'll give you 200 guaranteed, $250 million, um, $250 million um, contract, $200 million guaranteed, right? $50 million to give us some flexibility. Two fifty dollars altogether. I think Lamar would take it. I truly do. That's $50 million a year. Uh, 200 guaranteed. They could pay out like 100 and something right out the bat. <laughs> I think he would do it personally. Now am, now, am I looking at that with my purple glasses on? Maybe. But once again, I'm saying and, and holding Lamar by what he has said, not what the team has said. Because remember, Bashadi came out and said, oh, Lamar doesn't feel like he's worthy of a contract. Lies. You thought he wasn't worthy for that type of contract. That's why I told everybody. I said, look, Lamar's coming back this season. I'm telling y'all, he's coming back. Because he, listen, if Lamar Jackson, I want, you, I, want to, I want you to paint a picture right now. If Lamar Jackson wins a title with this Bro, <laughs> the fans wouldn't let Bashadi or them get away with getting rid of them. I'm telling y'all this right now. They would not let them get. They would not let them get. Um, let them off the hook. It, bro, that's the one time you would start to see people clamoring. Like, it wasn't my decision. Duh. Like you hear that come out. Right. I'm telling you because everyone at that point is saying, "Look, Bashadi, you a billionaire. I want to keep coaching, <laughs> or I want to keep being a general manager. I don't want this to be my only stop. If you're not here." And that's where I'm getting to. That's why this thing has been so volatile because it's all, it's, it's ego. And you can say ego from both sides, right? But still, it's ego. And I truly believe that Lamar, if, La, listen, Lamar, as much as he's been mad that they've made it, put him through all the way he's went through, because you can see he's pissed. I think he's pissed also because the offense isn't where it needs to be. I truly believe that. Lamar is a winner. He wants to win. I don't care who it is. He wants to win. He wants to win easily. He wants to win by big leads. He wants to be spectacular while he's doing it. That's how he is. And when you look at what the Ravens have been, especially this season, especially this season, you wouldn't be mad if you thought like that. You would be pissed. You would be so pissed, especially with the construction or the weapons in which he was given. So that's the box where I think we're in. Can't, listen, oh my God, I'm praying to every, listen, I'm praying so hard that the water has not run dry, bro. Because look, we don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And then all of a sudden it comes up, Lamar Jackson's been traded. <laughs> and I just start crying online like, <laughs> I'm a puke. Oh. <laughs> like straight up, that could be me. So, you know, I'm hoping that it can get um, rectified. I really do. But look, I don't think that it is. And once again, it's because I'm taking Lamar at his word. That's the problem as us fans have yet. We've yet to look at it and say, look, we're just going to trust Lamar. Why would we go against anything else he says? We can see he's pissed. We can read body language. Yeah, he's pissed. He's mad. That's clear. That's for sure. But everything he said, everything Lamar has ever said throughout, even when he said, yo, oh, keep him out the New York Jets game. He look, he's more hurt. He's like, I told you I'm fine. If I told you I'm fine, I'm fine. He was fine. Remember, John Harwell didn't even want to talk about it. Lamar came and said, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm playing next game. He ain't stopping me. That's the type of player he is. And honestly, look, I'm here for it all because I'm going to tell y'all this right now. If that man brings a Super Bowl, I want y'all to understand because everyone's arguing about this. We know we're deficient in weapons and everything else. If he could still find a way to bring a Super Bowl to Baltimore. What's that 150 cents song? I get money. I, I get money. I, I get, I get remix. I get money. I, 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 I get it. Because that's all he's going to be getting. 
Think about it. You barely see Lamar in any commercials. I think I've seen him in two. I Once I've seen him in the Heisman house with Baker and them. And then I think one other time it was for the, the Oakley commercial. That was it. That's the only two times I've ever seen him on a commercial. Imagine him as a Super Bowl winning QB. He doesn't even have a shoe deal. Think he would get a shoe deal then? He's going to be counting money. But Shadi knows that. EDC knows that. And they're just going to have to open their wallets. Because nobody in their right mind would give up their golden goose. Nobody. And I'll tell you this right now. He might be a raven, but he's a golden goose. And that man gives golden eggs the size of fists. To this team every time he steps on the field. And that, my friends, is why I truly do not believe that the waters run dry or that the that the bridge is over being burnt. Because if he gets the number that he's looking for or more than he's looking for, he's staying. And that ain't conjecture. That's fact. And that was another episode of the Wonderkin Show. Ha <laughs> ha! You guys are amazing, man. So amazing. You guys watch the episodes and the content. Thank you so much for supporting. Please do remember, if you have not already, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're the first person to get here for this content, baby. You feel me? And leave a comment. You know what I'm saying? We we talk, we laugh, we joke in the comment section. Hashtag the Wonder Flock. It's a great flock to be a part of. And we fly together. You know what I'm saying? We fly high together, and that's all we do. So, uh, once again, oh, last but not least, if you would like to donate to the channel to help the content uh, become greater in visuals and everything else. If you'd like to donate anything, the QR code is right here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and it'll also be in the description. Don't forget, money sign, The Wonderkin Show. And once again, that's another episode of The Wonderkin Show. It's your boy Nitro signing off. And you guys knows my slogan. Peace. And I am out of here. <gasps> Yo!